William Cleason's here. William, very good morning to you. Good to be here. Um, I don't know if I've spoken to you since uh, this shower have got into power. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe I think we have. I don't yeah. think you've been in the studio. Um, yeah. I think I have asked you about how badly they're doing. And they're doing really badly, aren't they? Yeah, it's the worst start to any government yeah. I've ever witnessed. I mean, most governments... It's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, most governments have a honeymoon, you know, but they, this government seems determined not to have one. They've no. just gone off. They've gone off with someone else right. immediately. Yeah, they've so literally got to the uh, got to the resort and suddenly you know, off. they're off, uh, cleared, yeah. leave, leave the wife by the pool, yeah. and they've gone off with a couple of women from, uh, from Romania. Just inept. So I think it's inept politically. Nothing against radio, by the yeah. way. No, it's inept politically. I mean, it shows how poor they are at politics, but it's also bad for the country because right. what they've done is any goodwill or optimism... I mean, we have first-past-the-post system in this country. You sweep the last lot yeah. out who are a shower and useless. They were also a shower, yeah. Useless. And what you, what you should get under this system is a new start of yeah. some kind. Right. What they've done is they've forfeited that, and they've got doom and gloom. And they've right. sort of, I'm going to put taxes up, it's going to be terrible, it's much worse than we thought. Yeah. So any momentum you might have had for the economy, anyone looking internationally to invest here, mm. is thinking actually it looks pretty bad. Yes. So I'm, I, I think what they've done is un unconscionable and is probably measurable, actually, in terms of the damage mm. it's done to the country, because you need some momentum yeah. in the new government. Well, people in business tell me that because the, um, uh, the, the warnings about the budget being dire mm. um, are so kind of, you know, believable, mm. that nobody's actually investing anything at all people in business yeah. are not doing anything yeah. they're not saying all right let's open a new restaurant or you know let's expand the one we've got or let's redecorate or mm. you know what i mean no. there's no activity going on economically because everyone's waiting for the other shoe to fall yeah. from rachel reeves yeah no uh, doom and gloom and what it does is exactly what you say it has a chilling effect not yeah. just on households you know as you describe people mm. don't have the confidence to invest right. But I'm talking about investment, industrial investment, yes. capital formation, all that stuff. That, you know, their, their attitude is so gloomy, it's so bad, right. the Tories left us with such a bad leg legacy, we're going to have to put taxes mm. up. I don't believe any... And also, it doesn't chime with their growth. They, uh, they're sort of schizophrenic, aren't they, Mike? Yeah. They say, on one hand, we want growth, we're committed to growth, and then the next minute they they're basically talking down the country yeah. and saying it's terrible and so they're clamping down on on funds on finance on yeah. every kind of place they can make a tax they're going to do it for but sure what makes it worse for me is the absolute and utter hypocrisy mm. barefaced lies being mm. told by Keir Starmer Rachel Reeves Angela Rayner mm. David Lammy all of them um, you know David Lammy had the had the absolute gall to go on mm. television on Sunday mm. to say well of course you know Keir Starmer's entitled to get free clothes because he doesn't have a budget to buy them well, nobody does. And no. he, he made out that in America, the, 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 the First Lady and the, and the President have a budget to buy clothes. They don't. He mm. was wrong about that. Mm. No, it's, 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 as I say, it couldn't play worse politically, mm. could it, this? I mean, no. You've got a new Labour leader, and it turns out he's got expensive tastes right. and expensive ties, and half of them... And it turns out today, pay for. thanks to the Times, he's yeah. actually been the man who has been in the receipt of most freebies since 2019, Doesn't out of all the MPs. Yeah, yeah. Now, how yeah. dare this guy stand there yeah. as if he's some kind of high moral yeah. arbiter of what we should all be doing? No, and, and, and it wouldn't be so bad if they weren't so bossy. Yeah. This is the typical, That's the thing. The typical champagne socialist, yeah. I mean, so at the same time, he's taking all that, he's right. getting all these freebies, and he's clamping down on everyone else. And uh, the winter... I mean, I don't think I've spoken to you about this, obviously, but we, you know... The, the winter, winter fuel announced, it's what a shambles totally that inept. Is. And, right. and I think a lot of that, Mike, wasn't about the money. It was about showing who is boss. It was sort of muscular. Mm, right. We're in charge now. Yes. This is what we're going to do. We're going to punish somebody. And most pensioners don't vote Labour, right. so you're just going to have to suck it up. And right. I think it was very brutal, actually. Very brutal politics. and cruel. Absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. Let's have a look at David Lammy, because, of course, um, you know, he was just over in America not getting any uh, change, by the way. Uh, they talk about mm. change in the Labour Party. Out of Joe Biden, who basically said uh, to Keir Starmer, no, you can't sell uh, weapons to Ukraine without mm. us uh, going mm. along with it. But now he's suddenly turned his sights on climate change. Today I'm committing to you that while I am Foreign Secretary, action on the climate and nature crisis will be central to all that the Foreign Office does. This is critical given the scale of the threat. The threat may not feel as urgent as a terrorist or an imperialist autocrat, but it is more fundamental. It is systemic, it's pervasive, and accelerating towards us at pace. I would say none of that is true. 
Absolutely none of it. Well, I mean... He's talking out of his backside. Yeah, what the problem with this is that it's, it's a sort of displacement activity, yeah. isn't it? So instead of doing my job, which is to be Foreign Secretary, I'll start talking about other things. Right. It's not even his remit. Well, he hasn't oh. lost luck, has he? He went to Israel, mm. didn't get a meeting with Netanyahu because no. he previously called for his arrest. Of course. Goes to America, yes. doesn't get what he wants out of Biden, Hard and he comes Biden. back, he decides, well, maybe we should go for climate change. Yeah, he's probably, yeah. I mean, the thing, if you, if you put end-to-end -end the things he said about mm. various people, Trump included, Yes. if he gets in, it, he is about the most unfit pick for yes. foreign secretary. He he's not a diplomat. Is. Not yeah. a diplomat. He's but actually not very bright either. No, I, I suspect I'm sorry you're right. to say that. I but, I mean, you know. I've never detected a huge intellect no. in, in And London. do you know what he's done? He's done this yeah. kind of Diane Abbott style. If mm. I speak slowly, people mm. will think I'm thoughtful. Yeah. It's like the sort of football manager rule, isn't it? Yeah. If you speak slowly and stroke your chin a lot, very people think, oh, you must be really it's bright. It's very profound. Yeah, yeah. What you're saying is very profound. Right. No, I mean, I would I say on, on this, it was a striking headline, uh, you know, to put climate change ahead of what Putin's doing or, right. or uh, security in the Middle East, but he's done it. I mean, I would agree that Putin is a more uh, proximate threat, and it's probably mm. is tran tra transitory, won't last forever, uh, wars tend not to, uh, and the climate change issue is a long-term one, but nothing that Lamy does will make any difference to climate change. No. Nothing at all. No. So I would, I, and it's bad discipline on the part of the government, mm. actually. And the Prime Minister, because if he's going to run an effective team, they must stick to their remit, yeah. Mike. You've got to get people focused on what yeah. their job is. Stick to that. His job is to make us more secure mm. and to pursue British interests abroad. But this is one of the things that I said last week. There doesn't appear to be a central core no. to the organisation. You know, when Tony Blair, as much as we might not have liked him as Prime Minister, came in, Agreed. there was a central core. You know, everybody was playing from the same hymn sheet. Everybody mm. knew what the, what the mission was, if you like. And they did things which I think we now regret, but they yeah. did them and yeah. they got on with it. Nowadays, you get people like Angela Eagle <coughs> goes on Times Radio and they ask her about Keir Starmer's clothing allowance mm. and she said, well, you should better ask him. Yeah. No, it's Sorry. woeful. What's about a cabinet responsibility? Yeah, they, they, they've got the worst combination, actually, Mike, which is, which is extreme bossiness and ineffectiveness. Yeah. You know, it's okay, actually, you don't even actually have to be particularly liked, actually, to be an effective Prime Minister. Right. A lot of people said of Thatcher, I wasn't a fan at all, but, uh, you, you know, if she was effective, we 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 didn't have to like her. Right. You know, a lot of a lot of the public around the world, people are respect the same leader. In business, though, isn't yeah, it? yeah. If you're effective, but they're neither effective. They're bossy right. and and ineffective. Right. And so this this lack of control over his over the foreign secretary mm. is, is woeful. Bad appointment. But then again, you know, Mike, there's not much to choose from, is there? If you look at the Labour benches, well, you look at the front pretty bench. woeful. I mean, even Angela Rayner has been kind of sidelined because yeah. they've got this machine which appears to be being run by Sue Gray. Mm. I know this is slightly inside the beltway for people who are not that interested in who Sue Gray is. Yeah. But, you know, every time I talk to Dan Hodges, he's like, she's so divisive, mm. she's in charge of everything, she's pushing people around, she's pushing people out the door. Yeah. You know, Angela Rayner now doesn't get to stay at Dorneywood because uh, mm. they've decided to give that to Rachel Reeves. Really? She yeah. doesn't really have any kind of yeah. remit uh, of any kind. You know, she gets stuck, uh, stuck into Parliament to answer stupid questions that mm. she doesn't know the answers to. She you doesn't know, know the Answers. No, but that's yeah. But to, to get back onto to this point, is I'd, I'd sort of accept someone in the position of leading the the, the 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 way on housing if they knew anything about housing. Right. If she made statements that made any sense. So when she made the statement, well, on she housing, knows a thing or two about selling and flipping council. She houses. knows about her own house, right? but she doesn't know how to get three hundred and fifty thousand homes built a year. No. And and I know a little bit about it. And we're the SDP is very good on housing. Yeah. And I had a look at the proposals. It has zero chances mm. of happening. I promise you, Mike. Mm. We could meet in five years' time. They're not going to build one and a half million homes. They can't. Their, their scheme is, is badly conceived. Uh, it just will fail. And she doesn't realise that you can't just flip the housing sector and say increase your productivity, mm. increase your capacity by by 80 percent. That's what her pro pro yes. investigations imply. You can't do it. No. But also they're very much wrapped up, aren't they, in the sort of culture wars. They used yeah. to say, well, don't do the culture wars. It's nothing to do with us. It's the Tories who keep making it up. Yeah. Suddenly Lisa Nandy, the culture minister, uh, is a culture secretary, mm. wants to start regulating the sale of Oasis tickets. Yeah, you know, or suddenly, you know, suddenly you've got somebody uh, who wants to get involved in the football business and wants to regulate football to the point where it may well end up that England don't qualify for their own Euros because FIFA will say, no, sorry, no thanks. Uh, you yeah. can't do that. No, but this, it gets back on this culture war thing again. They said, you know, that other people are stoking it and we're not going to do it. Bridget Phillipson gets in as Education yeah. Secretary. First thing she does is remove the free speech yes. uh, legislation that applied to the universities. Right. First thing. Right. And it took them a long time. Eric Kaufman and other people worked on it and, and there was a good bit of legislation. Yeah. And it meant that it guaranteed 
people's right to speak up on yeah. if, on topics that are a bit bit spicy right. sometimes in university. If you can't do that in university, right. what's the point of going to university? Mm. First thing she did was scrap it. You know, so they, they this Labour Party have a sort of brutalism, but they're also incompetent yes. and useless, and they'll they'll reap the reap the rewards of that. Well, let's not forget they've got Ed Miliband back, and funnily oh enough, Lord. Um, I yeah. got a message from somebody the other day who said actually by stealth they're bringing an awful lot of Blairites mm. and Brownites back mm. into the fold. You know, um, they've got Jackie Smith. Uh, who's now in the laws, but she's an advisor. Yeah. Uh, they've got Alan Milburn back. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, they've got a whole host of people. The guy, Lord Dan Danzin, I think it was Danzi that did yeah. the health yeah, report. Yeah. You yeah. know, they've got an awful lot of people that worked under Blair and Brown, who are sort of embedded now under the the, the, the sort of the edge of the of the of the, the carpet of government. And Ed Miliband, have a look at this, right, uh, where he talks about being like Batman. Mm. It's 2008. Barack Obama has been elected President of the United States. Usain Bolt is breaking records at the Beijing Olympics and Batman is dominating at the box office. And I'm the Energy Secretary. Yes, like Batman, I've returned. Yeah, but except he's not like Batman. I, mean, no. I wish he was like Batman. No. He was a fictional figure. Yeah. Um, you know, and Robin could come along and just assassinate him. Mm. But unfortunately, that can't happen. Um, and that would only be in the unreal world, of course, of, uh, of comic books. Yeah. But he is a comic book character, isn't he? It's embarrassing, yeah. For Actually, a lot of his... his I mean, I know politicians have got to do social media. We all have to do it. But the but some of his, his tweets and his uh, to-camera things are frankly right. embarrassing. They are. They're not a serious The one person. where he did the ukulele yeah, by no. the wind farm. Sorry, I don't want that in an energy secretary. No. Someone sensible. But just on the substance of what he says, uh, major, major problems. I see, I listen to what he proposes and yeah. I just see a climate change zealot. Someone yeah. doesn't understand right. that gas and oil are still going to be part yeah. of our economy for a long, long time. The Labour Party doesn't like it mm. and they're very, very hostile. And they're spending billions on getting rid of it. Yeah, That's getting rid of it. That's the thing I don't get. Yeah, and then, and, you know, and then look at farmland. So he's going he's gonna, to, we're going to roll out this mass uh, solar farms, mm. uh, onshore wind farms, and that's going to take valuable agricultural land. You know how many, you know, basically we import 40% of our food now, Mike. Right. 40%. Right. You know, as, as recently as the 80s, we've, most of the food that we ate in this country was produced here. Right. So you'll never, you'll never solve that problem if you, if you turn all these fields, right. primary agricultural land, over to solar farms. Mm. Ludicrous policy. But he doesn't get it. And I, every time any journalist speaks to Miliband, just ask him the key question. How are you going to get the base load? Yeah. And he hasn't got an answer because nuclear energy is the only way we're going to get it if he doesn't like gas. Right. If he doesn't like gas and fossil fuels, nuclear is the only option, and he's weak on that. They're yeah. looking, they're now prevaricating on a nuclear project in North Wales. Right. Don't prevaricate, get on with it, right. build them. But they're also now prevaricating on the, no, on the 2030 deadline uh, for the stopping, stopping of the sales of petrol and diesel cars and yeah. hybrids. You know, and they're already pushing it back to 2035. I'm glad they are, because it's a stupid idea anyway. Yes. Um, well, but as you say, you know, there's no benefit to the people. No. We're not being told, don't worry, it's going to be cheaper. They told us it was going to be cheaper before the election. No. It turns out it's now going to be more expensive. No. And meanwhile, the High Court uh, has, has, has basically stopped the coal project in, in, in Cumbria, yeah. which was a specialist coking coal, which right. we as a party supported. And all of the Labour Party were against it and they're jumping for joy. But I, don't, I think that's a political decision, Mike. I right. don't want the High Court deciding whether no. a, a coal mine can go ahead on environmental grounds. No, because, government to do it. Yeah, exactly, because the, 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 I'm afraid the judicial, judicial system has been compromised. No, it it's is. It's full of, you know, raging climate activist lefties. Yeah, and they, they're achieving you know. their aims through undemocratic purposes. Mm. And I'll tell you what, that would, if that had gone ahead, that would have been proper levelling up, mm. proper reindustrialization, proper jobs. You'd have had a whole series of other industries around working some Whitehaven that would have supported it. Right. Disastrous. It was a disastrous uh, event. Yeah, well, the only thing more disastrous, I suppose, than uh, Labour being in is the Lib Dems. Uh, they just had their conference down in Brighton. Let's have a look at Ed Davey. I mean, I don't know what to say about that, really. Um, he can't sing. No. Um, he can't really govern. Um, he's got nothing to offer apart from these stunts that he does. He yeah. arrived at the Bright Brighton conference on a jet ski, right, in a wetsuit. Um, and, well, I do mean... You know, do, you, do, you, do you want to know what I think of it? Yeah, it just on. Every time I see something like that, it makes yeah. me jump for joy that the SDP under David Owen stayed well clear of the Liberals. Yes. They didn't get on too, too well. And, and honestly, it was, it was not a good mix. No. I mean, they're, they're, they're ludicrous. I mean, friends say occasionally, it's like he's jumping into water in the election. 
uh, and I thought that was absurd. Yeah. Uh, I mean, looking around the stage there, which is the 72 um, mm. Lib Dem MPs, it's like that uh, scene from mm. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest when they all go out on the boat. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's what they look like. Yeah, yeah it's all back on the bus, you know. know. Come Let's on. Go. Come on. <laughs> this way, no Who's sharp movements. Yeah. Nurse. No, no, nurse. Come on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it is. It's just no, it's mad. It's pitiable. And as I say, you want to have very little to do with them, I'm afraid. Yeah, very well said. William, William Cleaston there, sensible man. Um, again, um, like reform, um, a party that have probably got much more to offer than you would even know. Uh, but you can't find out because the two-party system, the post past the post. We shall see. We'll talk about it more. William, thanks very much indeed.